Amen. Turn in your Bible and your Bibles uh, to Ephesians chapter six, please. Ephesians chapter 6. This last chapter. These verses should be uh, very familiar uh, to most of you. Finally, my brethren, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God wants strong people in this church, not weak ones. Amen. Daniel the prophet said, The people that know their Lord shall be strong and do exploits. So it's our choice. We can be strong in Him, and any of us can do great works and great exploits for God. And in the power of His might. Well, what is this power? What do we call him? The Almighty God. Amen. And we're in him, and here he's in us. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's basic Christianity. So we have Almighty God dwelling in us, and we're in him. Amen. That's power. That's right. That'll make us strong, and we need to learn to exercise this authority that God has given us. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand. We need to take a stand. So often we don't hear about taking a stand anymore. It's standing down. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's all about. This summer, during all the rioting and looting. The mayors, the governors, were ordering the police forces to stand down. What does it mean to stand down? I looked that up in the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary. It, a relaxation of status of a military unit or force, police force, from an alert or operational pasture, posture. So we're always to be alert and in operation mode. Amen. Not relax. But we're to fight. We're to battle. We're in a race and we have to run in this race if we're going to be uh, successful. Another meaning of stand down is to leave the witness stand, the legal term. Hmm. We don't want to ever leave the witness. Amen. Amen. We're called to be witnesses. Right. Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and on to the uttermost part of the earth. So that's power, the power of the Holy Ghost to be witnesses. We are his witnesses of these things. Acts 5, verse 32. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Amen. So this is a twofold witness. We have our own witness, and as we're faithful to this witness, we also have the Holy Ghost witnessing. Amen. And in the Bible, he witnesses typically with signs, with miracles, uh, with wonders. These signs shall follow them. We're standing against the wiles of the devil. Why did Jesus come to the earth? According to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, he that commits sin is of the devil. But the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Well, what is the work of the devil? Well, sin is certainly the right. work of the devil. Right. Sickness and disease and poverty. These are all works of the devil. 
And He came to destroy these works. And we need to be working with Him to destroy these works ourselves. Amen. Of the devil. We cannot be ignorant of his wiles. Ignorant of his devices. And the devil's a master of deceit. Right. Back in the 50s, J. Edgar Hoover, head of the FBI, wrote a big book on communism called Masters of Deceit. Yep. Comey, I believe he was a master of deceit. Right. Right. I think he was a communist. Right. And one of the tactics of the communists is character assassination. Mm -hmm. They have utterly assassinated the character of this great man we had as head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover. Yes. And he's, they're trying to convince people he was a homosexual. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. So we cannot be ignorant of the devil's devices. He goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he might devour. Right. Whom we're to resist steadfast in the faith. We have to resist him. Amen. James said, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So if he's not fleeing from you, if he's not running from you, apparently you're not resisting him. Right. As he, as you should resist, and as we have the power to resist, Amen. we're not exercising the power that God has given unto us. Peter, and he should know, described the ministry of Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 10, and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So he went about healing people's souls but not just healing people's souls. He went about healing their bodies. Amen. Meaning their various needs. God wants to bless us. And his blessings are available, but we need to know what the blessings of God are. Right. And we need to lay claim on these blessings. Verse 12. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. As I was preparing this message yesterday afternoon, the Communist Manifesto came to my mind. Karl Marx, with the help of Frederick Engels, in 1848, wrote the Communist Manifesto. And it begins this way. The specter is haunting Europe. What is the specter? The sparrow. Oh, yes, the ghost. The, ghost. Oh. the specter is haunting, haunting Europe. The specter of communism. All the powers of old Europe have entered into a holy alliance to exercise this specter. This is basically the same language that Paul is using here. Only uh, the, Marx is applying it to his side, the communist side, yep. as opposed to the capitalist side. And he goes on to say, Pope and Tsar, Tsar of Russia, Metternich, um, one of the leading political figures in Germany, uh, Gazat of uh, France, he was a leading figure in France, French radicals and German political spies. These, were, these are principalities. These are powers. These are powers. There's a power to communism, but communism is actually an idea. Right. It's a thought. And then the manifesto ends by declaring the proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. Hmm. They have a world to win. 
we need to realize the fight they're in, that we're in. Mm -hmm. We have a world to win. That's the mission of the church, to win the world for Christ, Amen. to occupy till he comes. Amen. The communists have a vision that they're willing to die for. Well, God has given us a vision and a mission, and we need to be willing to lay down our life to fulfill this mission. How do we do that? Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself daily and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. Workers of the world unite. So communism is already acknowledged, according to Marx, in the mid-19th century, uh, to be itself a power. But we have the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have the power of the Almighty God. Okay. We have the power of truth, right. which can set men free from their sins. What did Jesus say when he rose from the dead? All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye, therefore, into all nations, teaching men to observe all things I have commanded, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Blessed Trinity. Go into all nations, go into all the world. But he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. See, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam said, he had power, he had dominion over the earth. Mm -hmm. But he turned over this dominion. When he sinned, when he ate forbidden fruit, he turned it over to the devil. And Jesus came to win that back. Amen. And he did win it back. Right. How did he win it back? Through his atoning work on the cross, Amen. through his death, and, and his resurrection. resurrection. Right. Thus, a fulfillment of Genesis 3.15, mm -hmm. the first messianic prophecy uh, in the scriptures, which reads, uh, God pronounces judgment on the serpent. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And her seed, which is Jesus, shall bruise thy head, shall bruise the serpent's head, and the serpent shall bruise his heel. So Jesus heel was bruised on the cross. But when he rose from the dead, he crushed the head right. of the serpent. Right. Amen. He destroyed the power of the devil. Amen. And he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Jesus said in John chapter 12 and verse 31, now is the judgment of this world. Now will the prince of this world be cast out. Amen. That's why Jesus came. To cast out the prince of this world. He's called the prince and the power of the air in the epistles. He's called ruler of this world in the epistles. Now how is it that after Jesus had this great triumphant this great victory on the cross, how is Satan still ruler of this world? Right. How, what happened? What happened so quickly? Well, the church failed to occupy right. till he came. Yeah. The only power the devil really has is the power that we grant the devil, That's right. that we turn over to the devil. And by us refusing to use or not even sometimes knowing how to use or what we have available, the authority of the believer to overcome and to occupy. Amen. And Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he see find faith on the earth? You know, and most men that I've heard assume the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Who says it has to be no? Right. I don't like that. That's negative. That's defeat us. I say yes. He will find faith on the earth yes. when he returns. Why not? Yeah. 
Let's have an eschatology of victory, Amen. not defeat, victory for the church. Amen. Amen. He didn't intend the church to be a failure in history. I believe he wants the church to be victorious in history. Amen. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Amen. But so many have an eschatology doctrine of last days that pictures the church as being defeated. Yeah. You can't win. What if a coach said, we're going to lose this game? <laughs> Coaches never say that to their team. Yeah. We're going to win. Right. God's on our side. That's right. And as long as God's on our side and he witnesses with us, we're bound to win as we are faithful to our calling. Amen. Jesus, when he began his ministry, he went into the synagogue. He started to read from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. Amen. Oftentimes, uh, students who ask me on campus or other places, but I mean, ministers are asking me. All the Christians ask me, uh, who ordained you? <laughs> I said, well, I haven't been ordained by any ecclesiastical body. But I'm anointed. That's right. And that's the difference. Anybody can get ordination right. today, which is very little effort, even mail order uh, ordination. But not just anybody is filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Any true believer can be <clears throat> if he asks. And receive. He can be filled with God's Spirit. He can be anointed. And of course, the Messiah means the anointed one. Mm -hmm. So God has anointed us. Where did Jesus get his power and authority? Hebrews 1 and 9, God the Father. Because thou hast yes. loved righteousness. God is speaking directly to his son. Yes. Because you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Amen. Why did Jesus have an anointing above his fellows? Not simply because he was the Son of God, although we believe that. But because he loved righteousness. And he hated sin. Right. He hated iniquity. But we've come to, well, I wouldn't say accept sin, but tolerate mm -hmm. it. And we're no longer offended by it right. as we should be. You know, we can sit and watch it and kind of laugh, and and uh, but we need to be offended by it. Amen. Jesus was offended by it because he hated evil, he hated sin, and he loved the right. Amen. He loved righteousness. That was the key to his anointing, the key to his power. And that's the key to our being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to, he, to the poor. To, to, he has sent me. See what people say. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach. Hallelujah. To preach deliverance to the captives. Amen. Men have been captivated by the devil. Right. These students' minds have been captivated. And I'm here to liberate them. Amen. To set them free. To set them free from the false ideas of the devil. From his philosophies along with it, what goes along with communism, atheism, right. secularism, uh, humanism. Uh, it all it's basically all the same right. when it comes right, right down to yeah. it. Just different words, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of new wine and old wine skin, so to speak. The devil doesn't have to come up with anything new. His ideas at work generation after generation. Sometimes a little bit of different terminology or, you know, put some more kind of an up to date language, but it's still the same old lies. Yeah. He's the author of all lies. Yeah. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Neither is there any truth in him. And we're to resist him steadfastly. Amen. Faith. Amen. 
For Jesus said, now is the prince of this world judged. He was judged on the cross. We need to understand that. And then Jesus sent the Comforter to his church, the Holy Spirit. And when he has come, he will convince the world of sin mm -hmm. and of righteousness and judgment. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. We need to understand he's defeated. He's judged. And we're on the winning side. Amen. But we got to finish. See, Christ finished his atoning work. But... The church has to proclaim it. That's right. our part. That's right. it, it, if people don't hear it, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And how they how will they hear if they don't have a preacher? Right. So it's us, it's up to us to speak of this victory. Get excited over this victory. Amen. Well, I was watching part of the game today and and uh, what in 2005 the White Sox won the World Series they were still talking about that see that victory they had what 15 years ago and when because that's an exciting time and we need to talk about the victories we have and not get this negative defeatist attitude or we won't win anything right uh, this principalities and powers goes back to Ephesians 1 and 3. <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We're blessed in heavenly places right now. Amen. We're blessed in heavenly places, not just on earth. We are blessed in heavenly places. We're a spiritual man. We reach into the spiritual realm. We're not living, living to just the temporal or the earthly realm. When we understand the spiritual world, how do we understand the spiritual world? Well, we got to study it. we got to learn to operate in it. We need to learn to fight in it. The yeah. weapons of our warfare are not, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds that he's talking about. Satanic strongholds. Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. We need to pray that our understanding will be enlightened. A lot of people know things, but they don't understand things. So knowing, knowing something is one thing, understanding it is another. Being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I think a lot of times we don't understand our inheritance. We're just happy to get our free ticket to heaven. Well, we're not just out there on campus offering people a free ticket to heaven. We're trying to make disciples. Amen. We're trying to raise up an army. To bring revival to the campuses. Revival to America. Revival to the world. If America is going to be great again, we need to get the church to be great yeah. again. Amen. And we need to get the family to be great right. again. Right. Or America will never be great again until the family and until the church gets great again. Yeah. Because right. the family and the church, they're the foundation of America. Yeah. Our inheritance. And what the exceeding greatness of his power to us word is. Listen, not just power, but the greatness of his power. Yeah. We need to know the greatness of his power. Who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. Mighty power. Almighty power. It's in us. Amen. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And set him in his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principalities and powers and mights and dominions and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world that is to come. Amen. And it's put all things under his feet. When he rose from the dead, he crushed the serpent's head. Right.
and gave him to be head over all things, the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We are the body of Christ. Amen. He's the head of the body. Right. He sits at the right hand of God. If we're in him and he's in us, where are we sitting? Not just uh, here in this beautiful home in Rockford, Illinois. We're right now, spiritually speaking, sitting in heavenly places Amen. with him. Amen. At the right hand of the throne of Almighty God. Amen. You know, it's like, how would you like to be invited? I'm sure like this, the White House, some White House banquet, and sit right beside President Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and converse with him. Wouldn't that be great? Well, we can do that with Jesus. Amen. Where we sit in heavenly places with him, we can converse with him. And and he can say, Hey, uh, uh, Brother Jeff, this is what I want you to do. Amen. We have a relationship with him. That's right. <clears throat> and he's put all things under his feet, so all things are under our feet. That's right. All these principal evil powers, principalities, works of darkness. Spiritual wickedness in high places. It's all under our feet. I'll give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 2 2. We'll, we'll get verse 1 first. And you, have, and you have been quickened. We've been quickened. In other words, born again who were dead in our trespasses and sins, but now we're alive in our righteousness and our holiness. Amen. Wherein in times past ye walked according to this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. But the Holy Ghost works in the children of obedience. That's right. And it's the Holy Ghost power that is in us that is available to us, but we need to know this and understand it and exercise it. That's right. Remember when Jesus got in the boat with his disciples that we're going to go over to the other side of the sea and a storm arose yeah. and the waves were billowing and, and coming into the ship. It looked like the boat was going to sink yeah. and, and was Jesus asleep. was asleep and <laughs> the stern of the ship and and yeah. this, the disciples came, Jesus, Jesus, wake up. Don't you care that we perish? We're going to drown out here. <laughs> so Jesus gets up and uh, he speaks under the storm. And he says, peace. And he speaks on the sea, be still. And suddenly there's a great calm. And his disciples were astonished and Jesus said, why were you so fearful? Right. I mean, Don't you have any faith? Where you have no faith. Through faith, we can speak to the storm. We can speak to the wind. Now, I know one prominent television evangelist that been making a lot of fun of because he was speaking to the virus and telling it to be cast out. Well, why not? Yeah, amen. Well, they said, well, it didn't work. I guess that makes them a false problem. Well, at least he gave it the old college drive. Yeah. And if more of us were speaking, we'd have more power. And we, you know, at least we can, I, I trust you all speaking, this isn't going to come near my house. Right, amen. This is going to come near my family. Well, not, don't just limit it to your family, limit it to, you know, extend it to your church family, extend it to America, extend it to the world. He'll deliver us from the noisome pestilence. That's Psalm 91. This is a pestilence. Uh, Trump calls it a plague. A pestilence plague is essentially the same thing. Yep. We need to learn to exercise his power. Amen. Might not work the first time. We're kind of you know, new to this. You know? <laughs> I, I, well, as with me in the middle, you know, a lot of my prayers aren't answered. That doesn't stop me from praying. I've right. uh, right. laid hands on a lot of people uh, for healing. I don't know, well, most of them I don't think get healed, but some of them do or testify to it. And I'm going to keep doing it because God says to do it. Amen. Uh, people I pray with, a lot of them 
Don't ever seek to come out of the world or out of sin, but that's not going to stop me from praying with them Amen. and praying for them. So after they land on the shore, up comes the demonic of the Gadarenes. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus speaks to these demons on clean spirits. I think unclean spirits are mostly lustful spirits connected with sexual sin and lasciviousness. They've been unloosed all over the world, really, especially on our college campuses. And he said, he said in Mark uh, chapter 5, he said, Come out! Come out of the man! Thou unclean spirit! He spoke the word. He said, come out. He didn't say, bother, deliver this man. Sometimes we pray like that, but sometimes we just need to speak God's word. Come out, you unclean spirit. And then Jesus, what is your name anyway? Mm -hmm. My name is Legion. And we are many. You know what a legion is? You know how many are in the Roman legion? About 5,000. Wow. So that means 5,000 demons, unclean spirits, were in this one man. And so they asked to be cast in the swine, which Jesus did. How many swine were there? <laughs> 2,000! Then they fell into the cliff and drowned at sea. So that's a lot. Yeah, the devil, you know, he's not omnipresent like God. Uh, he's he's can't be everywhere at once. But he's got all these demons. Right. Just kidding. How many demons were in this one person? These are fallen angels. All begin. He was a murderer and a rebel from the beginning. Lucifer. He said, I will exalt myself to the throne of God. I will be like the most high. He led in rebellion, the third of the angels in rebellion. Sometimes people have asked me, well, why didn't God do something about it? Well, I think God hoped for a while. He had come around. You know, come back, learn his lesson. You know, God, God gives us space often to repent. I'm obligated to, but I think often he does, and usually he does. Give a space to repent. Well, finally, God, he's not, not going to repent. I'm going to have to go to more extreme measures. So there's war in heaven. What, what is this heavenly war? What was that like? What were their weapons? Truth. Mm -hmm. See, that, that's our main weapon. That's the main spiritual weapon. The sword of the spirit. Truth. The truth against the lie. That's where the warfare is. Jesus against the devil. Uh, faith against unbelief, right against wrong. The battle's been raging way, way, way back, and it's going on and on and on and on and on, and we need to fight in this battle daily. Amen. All right, back to Ephesians. So we delivered that man, and then the man, you know, wanted to join up yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. Oh, well, sure, you know, you need some seminary training. You need to sit under my ministry a while before you go. No, no, no. Just go tell people the great things I've done in your life. That's right. We don't have to know too much to start with. You know, if we're really going to be successful, we need to study and sell ourselves approved. But God will show us the more when we're willing to share more. Amen. He'll begin opening up things to us you know, as we're active in evangelism. So, spiritual wickedness in high places, the wiles of the devil, the deceits of the devil, we need to know. Therefore, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in that evil day. Amen. And this is an evil day. And having done all to stand, we need to keep taking a stand. No time to relax. Amen. No time to just sit around. Well, I'm my goodness, I'm 77 now. I've been at this for almost 50 years on campus. I think I'll relax. Go 
play golf in Florida. <laughs> and uh, we got it. We can. We can't rest. Right. Start resting with iron. Mm -hmm. We got plenty of time to rest, don't we? Amen. Amen. But our time is short here on earth. Right. And we got to be Make active. Right. And uh, you know, there's a tendency after you've had great victories, take it easy for a while and rest on your laurels. We don't do that. Having done all, to stand. Keep standing. Don't sit down. Stand up. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, it goes on here. Uh, they're going to stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth. The girdle. Truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. You have on that breastplate. Amen. And Proverbs says the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. Jesus warned in the last days, men's hearts failing themselves for fear. We've lost our hearts. You know, Americans, during World War II, I think you brought that up this morning, World War II, what were the terms of surrender? We can un Unconditional surrender. surrender. Lay down your arms. Yeah. Today we get involved in this war <coughs> since World War II, and beginning really with Korea. Uh, it, it just goes up. And then as soon as they decide they're going to war, how are we going to get out of this? What's your plan for getting out of yeah. this? Well, the plan for getting out of it is to defeat the enemy. Right. Kill more of them than they kill them right. of you, yep. and destroy more of their stuff than they destroy of you until they give up. I surrender. Right. I've had it. I'm not going to fight anymore. That's when the war is over. Amen. And so we need to get back to that idea of demanding victory. General MacArthur, that Trump often quotes, he says, in, in war, there is no substitute for victory. That's right. If there's some substitute for victory, don't even fight the war. If you're not going to enter in the war, Insist on unconditional surrender before right. you even go to battle. Amen. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It'll bring peace when you unconditionally surrender to God. People, people are fighting God. And when they completely surrender to God, they'll have peace of mind. Right. They'll have a peace that passes all understanding Amen. and all knowledge. So we got to be in preparation. Always be prepared. Be ever ready to give an answer to anyone that asks us a reason for the hope that is in us. Amen. Above all, take the shield of faith where ye shall be able to quench some of the fiery darts of the wicked. Oh. Oh, 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 he darts the wicked. His darts of lust. His darts of unbelief. His darts of false philosophies and devolution. We encounter all these darts on campus. They're constantly throwing darts at us. But we've got the shield of faith. Amen. And we can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation. You've got to be saved. That's basic. Right. That's right. So make sure you've got your helmet on. And that protects the brain, the mind. It's to say the mind is the battleground. That's right. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Always pray. Pray without ceasing. Always be an attitude of prayer. An attitude of communication with God. God's communicating with us. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Watching. With prayer goes watching. we got to be on watch. Right. 24 hour watch. Or the devil will get into your house when you're right. not watching. That's right. With all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 
Okay, so what again? Our, our, is the armor of God? Well, there's truth, verse 14. Righteousness, verse 14. The gospel of peace, verse 15. Verse 16, faith is our weapon. The shield of faith. Uh, the helmet, the helmet of our salvation. Our salvation is, oh, through salvation, we just not only have forgiveness of sins, we have deliverance and victory over Amen. sin. Amen. Not just the consequences of sin, but sin no longer has dominion or control over us. That's right. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, both the living Word and the written Word. Jesus is the living Word, the Bible is the written Word. And again, praying always. And as for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. Boldly. Even Paul, as bold as he was, yeah. as much as yes. he talked about boldness, he said, Pray for me that I'll be bold. That's right. Please, you can lose your boldness. Yeah. So you always have to be on top. Paul said, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. That's after I preached to others. So myself would end up a castaway. Paul was concerned that he could even, you know, late in his ministry, of all his great accomplishments, that he could end up a castaway. That's why he had to constantly exercise self-control or temperance over his bodily, physical appetites. And he described himself, I am an ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So where to speak boldly? So do you know your inheritance? Are you claiming all your inheritance? You know, people sometimes subject to kind of the <laughs> Well, we need to name. <coughs> name what and claim. Amen. You know what what God you know, you've got to believe it in your heart. You just can't say it in your mouth. You've got to believe it in your heart. But why not? Name it and claim it. Yeah. Lay claim to it. You know, in the gold rush, you put in a claim. You know, you found some gold. Or you're allowed to lose it all and do all that <laughs> panning for gold in vain. <laughs> so peace be to the brethren, verse 23, and love with faith from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you all that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Amen, brethren. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, conclude by singing our more Christian song. Yeah, amen. Yeah. John Shirk reminded me this morning the first sermon I preached at, at uh, Chapelwood. He remembers, and we and I finished the, with the onward Christian soldiers. It's always been one of my favorite yeah. hymns. As a matter of fact, at, at our wedding in 1983, our recessional, as we walked back down the aisle after the minister pronounced this man and wife. And all saying convert in the congregation. Onward, Christian, Christian soldiers. Going, in the going on to war. What page is it? 517. 517. Good day. Did you need the song? Yes. Now, just step up here. All right. Everybody ready? <laughs>